Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. We have been studying the seven mysteries of the faith. These are the most important lessons for the last days in which we're living. We know we're living in the last days, and we have seen that, and we're going to see this as we begin to study the covenants and the dispensations. And we will probably get into the first covenant today, and then next week we'll get into the seven covenants and the seven dispensations. And these are tremendous lessons. And of course, we saw how we have been studying the seven mysteries of the faith, the mystery of godliness, the mystery of the one body, the mystery of the indwelling spirit, the mystery of the seven stars, and the mystery of the rapture. Oh, this is my favorite lesson. That's what we're looking for today, the rapture to take place. If you don't have that hope, you need to ask Christ to save you today, that we will be soon with the Lord when the rapture comes. We are ready to meet him in the air. And then, of course, the mystery of iniquity doth already work. The mystery of iniquity began before Christ left this earth. So we're going to be reading in 2 Thessalonians. This is a, all of the second books in the New Testament are warning against apostasy and the last days. 2 Thessalonians is a word of comfort and prayer and exhortations. And this is for us today. And we're going to read chapter 1, beginning in verse 5, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to those that trouble you. You see, when someone does something to you, God says, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord, and his judgment is always right. Our judgment, judging another person, is never right because we cannot look upon that person's heart. He says to judge not that we will be not judged. And then in verse 7, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. Now, this is the day in which we're living. Everyone's troubled that doesn't know Christ as Savior. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of of his power. This is the word of God that he wants you to hear today. This is why he came to save you from the judgment to come. You will never be judged for your sin when you accept Christ as Savior. And then verse 10, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore, also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. And this is the wonderful message that God has for each of us today. As we study the word of God together, this is one of the greatest blessings to know you are a child of God and that he has given us victory over all satanic powers. 
He's given us victory over all sin, and he's given us victory over death because he died instead of me. Let's pray. A gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we come before thee today thanking thee and praising thee that thine is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory. We thank thee that this is a time when each of us desires thy perfect will that is truly serving thee and desires to glorify thee in our bodies. We're asking that thy life will be lived through each of us. We pray for believers to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We ask that we will behave ourselves wisely in a perfect way, that we will walk within our homes with a perfect heart. And we thank thee that thou hast promised us all things whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it that the Father may be glorified thereby. So we're asking our Heavenly Father in the power of the Holy Spirit to save every person that is listening. As we sit together today in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, as true believers, we want to worship thee in spirit and in truth and in the beauty of thy holiness. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So as we come to this awful, awful time of judgment that is coming for the Antichrist, we must read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse 3. God's word says, Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now this is Satan during the time of the tribulation period. He's going to be sitting in the temple in Jerusalem, and he is going to deceive the Israelis, the Jews, for three and a half years, because we're going to see in these lessons how he is going to deceive them by false peace. And this is a time when we see every nation wanting peace. And we're seeing how he's already deceiving the nations. Remember you not that when I was with you, Paul says, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his name. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That is, he will not be revealed. The Antichrist will not be revealed until true believers are taken out in the rapture. We will not know who the Antichrist is as long as we are here. And then he says, And then shall the wicked one be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonders. We saw this, that God performs miracles, Satan performs miracles, but God's going to destroy all the works of Satan. This is already predetermined by God. And he's with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Now, if you reject this truth that we teach you, this is what's going to happen to you. And for this cause, God's going to send 
strong delusion that you will believe the lie of Satan. That's why God says today, in all the apostasy that is in the world today, Satan is deceiving people every day. And that they might believe, verse 12, that they all might be damned. This is what God's Word says. Who believed not the truth, but even had pleasure in unrighteousness. This is what's happening today. People have pleasure in their sin. This is tragic because Satan makes pleasure look very good. Satan makes pleasure look very good. But you see what's happening today. We're going to see this in these truths. Everything that occurs in human history is moving that much closer to the final, final conflict between Christ and the Antichrist and the defeat of Satan. He's already defeated. Why would you want to follow someone that is already defeated? We are the only people that have victory. We have victory in Christ. You are going, you're defeated today. You're going to be defeated forever if you follow him because we just read God's word and that's the only truth in the world today. So this is a fascinating fact that fact both of history and prophecy and a key element in understanding the rise of the Antichrist. Ancient Rome was intimately involved in Christ's first coming in the revived form both in his second coming and the coming of the Antichrist. You must know this is why we see the European Union, the European community, the NATO, all of this is preparing for the Lord to come. And we're seeing this more every day. Satan intends to set up his own global kingdom here upon the earth with the Antichrist as the head of the world ruler. And as we see these things happening today, we know that there's one danger that we have, the danger of deception. No one would obey the devil if they recognized him. Knowing the destructive powers of deception, God warns us over and over about being deceived. I'm going to give you these verses, write them down, and study them. Matthew 24, 4, take heed that no man deceive you. Matthew 24, 5, many shall come and shall deceive many. Many shall come in my name. You see, they do this in the name of Christ. And then 1 John 3, 7, little children, let no man deceive you. And then Matthew 24, 24, if God did not intervene, the devil would deceive the very elect. That's why you have to know the Word of God today. And Matthew 13, 5, take heed that no man deceive you. Now I want you to listen to these truths. I want you to listen. We give these to you. We've already given this to you, many of these things. But I have been told that I need to repeat and repeat. Review and review. So listen to this, all of you. I want you to ask yourself, is this you? The deceiver can lead people to commit sins that brings God's anger down upon them. Is this you today? Listen what he says in Ephesians 5, 4, 5, 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. No human is too intelligent. No human is too intelligent to be deceived. And we're going to give you, if we get to it today, we're going to give you the victory for believers, how you can have victory. But we're going to finish today with these lessons that we have taught 
in the last few weeks about the seven mysteries of the faith. The last one that we have is the mystery of God. This is in Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10. And this is the last one because this is where God's judgment is ready to continue to get worse and worse. And he said, I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was, as it were, the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he cry, had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swore, swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. That means no longer delay for the judgments that are coming. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants, the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spoken to me again and said, go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and he said, give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall be to thy belly bitter, and it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and ate it up, and it, it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten, my belly was bitter. And now he said, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. You see, he had to. John was, in his obedience to God, he was revealing to John the awful judgments that are to come. The angel takes a stance upon the sea. This is that there should be no further delay he is speaking here of the continuation of the procedure of God's further judgments. This is at, at the time when John was still on the Isle of Patmos receiving the message from heaven of what's going to happen during the tribulation period. He says, but this is not the end, but this must be there must be a thousand year reign with Christ. And this is always a blessing. God always warns before the judgment comes, but then he always has something of promise for every believer. The thousand year reign with Christ that is to come for each of us that are true believers. Only true believers are going to be reigning with Christ in perfect peace and righteousness because he is the Prince of Peace. There is no doubt but that this was given, this is the theme of the judgment of all of the book of Revelation that he has for the coming judgment. We can be assured that as God speaks in judgment, the door of opportunity is always open for people to repent. That's why he has this for us. Aren't you excited that you have escaped this? If you're a true child of God, this is not for you. The little book denotes the universal authority 
delegating to the Lord Jesus Christ the right to bring to pass this chain of astonishing events and judgments marking the end of man's reign. This is what God is doing, that He is Lord of Lord. He is the only one that deserves praise. The little book has to do with the various results of this chain of God's judgments. That is what the judgments produce, both good and bad, because during the tribulation period, there will be multitudes saved. But I want to warn you that if you have heard the gospel, I would never take a chance on being here during the seven year reign with Christ because he says you're going to be damned if you reject his truth. So if we are raptured to be with the Lord, those that are going to be saved during the seven year tribulation period are going to be martyred for their faith. And the Antichrist is going to reign and he is going to enslave you in every area of your life. You're going to be a slave to your enemy. To the unsaved, it is bitter as gall, for it brings the consequences of man's sin to fruition, the fruition of the bitter judgments. But for the unsaved, it is the unfolding of his heavenly Father's perfect will, and his word is as sweet as honey, and it's more precious than gold that perishes. So this John tastes symbolically the sweetness and bitterness of the fulfillment of God's will upon this earth and the inhabitants that are called the people of the earth that reject Christ. And then the angels are appointed to execute this judgment, the divine will and purpose of God. Another one, this is just another one of God's magnificent creatures whom God has clothed with power for this occasion. These are celestial messengers. Now, we have the angelic host for our protection. Every true believer, Hebrews 1.14, teaches us that the angelic host, we have divine protection. Are they not all ministering spirits, ministering to those that be heirs of salvation? And you must claim that promise. Every promise in the book must be claimed or you cannot receive it. Just like salvation must be believed, his promises must be believed and received. So we see the seven thunders uttered their voices. I heard a voice from heaven saying, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. So this angel had a little book open, the word of God. There's no doubt that it was the word of God. And this is, he had great authority. We see that the purpose of God is to announce to the whole world. Remember, this, he's announcing this judgment. He's, he's announcing it today. This is a divine word. This isn't any man's word. This is divine words from God that there should be time no longer, no longer delay. And the reason for this mystery of God will be consummated when the seventh angel begins to sound the seventh trumpet. You see, God, this is the mystery of God. This is going to be the consummation. The hour of final judgment is come when he shall avenge a cry of his elect and by his son vindicate all of his attributes that have been challenged by the adversary, the enemy, Satan. Now listen what God's going to do. He will utterly destroy the usurper and his kingdom of darkness and establish his kingdom of everlasting righteousness. These two great mysteries, the mystery of godliness and the mystery of iniquity are brought to their inevitable conclusion. Are you ready to know Christ as Savior? Well, just before we have just a few minutes before our program goes off today. 
we're going to talk about the euro and what is happening today. This is the Antichrist coin of the realm. Nothing so big has ever happened before. Now, when you hear these truths, you're going to understand that you must accept Christ. We just heard how he's going to send the judgments, but he's warning us today. American Airlines 757 jetliner, two weeks after the World Trade Center disaster, there was a circular blue decal on the shining silver skin of the aircraft. Some passengers were, were placing their hands over the decal as they stepped onto the plane, almost like it was some sort of superstitious ritual. The decal had two words, one world. President Bush is global war on terrorism requires a global political alliance. It will entail the restructuring of many, many present geopolitical equators. This is what is happening today. By virtue of its size, the United European Union, this is what's happening. We can see this is the Antichrist being prepared for his reign and his mark. Daniel 9, 27. The Antichrist will deceive the world leader, forging alliances, presides over a period unprecedented economical prosperity and ever concludes a comprehensive Arab-Israeli peace pact in the Middle East. Can you see what's happening today? That's why the introduction of the euro is more significant than most people realize. There can be little doubt that the new European currency is helping to global community. Are you ready to meet the Lord?